Hey, what's up my friend, Mike Robertson here. And today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about building better training rooms. Now, if you're a seasoned vet in the programming game and you've been doing this for years, if not decades on end, then chances are, this first part of the video isn't gonna be super helpful to you. However, if you're new to the game and you're trying to figure out how to better write programs and how to match your clients and athletes recovery to the different training programs that you write, then I think this is gonna really help. So let's start with a basic example and let's use an extreme example here. So let's say it's Monday and you decide you're gonna take your client in the gym and you're gonna smash it, right? So big volume, big intensity day, however you wanna describe smashing somebody, that's what you do on Monday. Now, here's what's interesting. Depending on the age and the recovery capacity of the person that you're working with, there's gonna be a cost to this, right? So if you smash them on this day, they could be down for two, three, maybe even four days before they start to come back up. So your older clients, your clients that maybe don't recover as well, they're under a lot of stress, they could be Thursday, it could be Friday before they're ready to train hard again. However, your younger, your more robust clients, their recovery curve is gonna be quicker and quicker. So you could have really high level athletes that you could smash in the gym on Monday and if they do the right things outside of the gym, they're ready to go again on Tuesday. So when you're laying out a program, you've got to understand that not one program works for every client or athlete you work with. You've got to take into account what can this client or this athlete standing in front of me recover from on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's going to give you clues as to when you can train them hard again. Now, there's lots of things you could do to help expedite that recovery, right? So let's say normally it would take three, four days for your client to recover. That's if you did nothing. Well, maybe in here you could throw in some lighter conditioning days. Maybe you could throw in some active recovery days where you're dragging the sled, you're doing some mobility work. There's lots of ways that you can set this up to where you can actually increase or facilitate recovery and ultimately get your clients back in the gym to train with you faster and more efficiently. Now, as promised, beyond just this basic setup of a training week and when you're gonna train somebody hard again, what I'd also like you to consider is how the exercise that you choose and the way you set up your training week can either positively or negatively impact how a client moves in the gym. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're doing something like the old school bodybuilding split, right? So Monday, you're gonna go in the gym and you're gonna crush back because, you know, gym bros, they're gonna go hit chest, but like the real hardcore serious lifters, they hit back on Monday. So let's say you hit back Monday, rows, chins, all that stuff. You're squeezing everything back in together. So now, when you come in and Tuesday, you want to squat, well, that could be negatively impacting your squat workout because if you're locked up, if you can't open up that upper back, if you can't get your sacrum underneath you, if you can't squat the way that you want, this could negatively impact your movement quality. And then maybe Wednesday, you would take that off because you just crushed two big muscle groups in back-to-back -back days. So instead of setting it up like this, what if we set it up in a little bit different fashion? What if on Monday we did, say, like active recovery? And this would be some like mobility work. This could be some conditioning. You drag the sled, you know, maybe do some like push up variations. You just find different things to do. Loosen the body up and get it ready. So you're priming that system for the Tuesday workout. So now when you come in on Tuesday and you squat, my guy, my girl, your body is ready to squat you're facilitated, you're ready, everything feels good. And then, hey, you can crush your legs maybe on Tuesday and then come back in the gym on Wednesday, still get that back workout in, but now you're not gonna have a negative repercussion with regards to your movement quality. So just some random things to think about. This is what I think about when I'm hanging out, when I'm writing programs for my clients and athletes. I'm always thinking about how will things that I do at the start of the week either positively or negatively impact how I want my client to move later on in the week. So I hope this video helps you out. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, like it, whatever we do. Also, if you enjoyed it, please just throw a comment somewhere or show it to somebody else that you think that would benefit from this because, man, I'm here for you. I wanna help you get better as a coach, as a trainer, and man, love and appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in.